Hello my YouTube friends! Today I want to show you a really cool OBS plugin that can easily do things like this right here. Or even this. It's totally free and it's really easy to do. So you know what? Let me show you how to do it. Let's get to it! Likes and comments are super easy things that you can do to help push this video to a wider audience. So take a second down below and let me know how I'm doing. And while you're there, if you're not, please subscribe. It really does help me continue to make content that helps you. So thanks. First, we're gonna install the plugin. There's a link in the description below so you can follow along. Here is the page we're looking for. We're just gonna wanna click download in the top right hand corner. The easiest installation is the Windows installer zip file. There is also a Linux and a Mac OS install for this. So I'm going to download the install zip for Windows. Then I'm just gonna go to Windows browser and right click on our zip file and select extract and then click extract. It'll take us right in and I can just double click on the executable. Here I'm gonna select more info and then run anyways. Then I'm going to click OK and then install. Now it's telling me that I have OBS Studio already running on the machine. If you are in this situation, be sure to close out OBS Studio or select automatically close and then click next. In my case, I'm just going to uh, select don't close them and click next. And then of course, I'm going to get another error message because it will not install with OBS open. So I have to close it out. But all you're going to need to do, assuming that you already closed out OBS, is click finish and you will be done. So now source switcher is installed. Easy stuff. Now let's set it up in OBS. Now that we have source switcher on here, I have two scenes in here. I'm just going to rename this top scene and we'll call it images. Then I'm going to click the plus under sources and go to image. We want to name these images something we'll remember. So I'm going to call the first one poly and click OK. And then I'm just going to browse to my poly pop logo and click open and OK. And now I'm going to click the plus and go to image and we're just going to add the next one. In this case, it's the Owned image. I'll click browse and grab that image and then click OK. And we're going to do it again. I'm going to go to image. We'll call this one place it and click OK and browse and select the place it image. And then we'll click the plus for the last time. Go to images, call this one stream tunes and click OK. Then we just need to browse to it and click open and then OK. And we're all set. We have all of our images loaded up. Now I did take the time before I tried to load these images in to resize them all so they're 1920 by 10. 80 and on a black background and that's because they're going to look better if they're all the same size so it's just best to spend the time to make them the same size now I'm going to go into the second scene and I just have a camera in here I'm going to click the plus under sources and go to source switcher and click OK and now I'm just going to click the plus and we're going to add our image sources and you need to know the exact name for each of these so I'm going to type in stream tunes and click OK and that adds our first one. Now we can just switch to the other scene so we can actually see the image names so we're sure to get them right. Make sure that even capitalization is exactly the same as what the image is called. So the next one is going to be place it and then we'll add the owned and then poly and I'll click OK real quick. We'll go back to our other scene and then I'm going to right click on our source switcher and go to properties and we'll move this up and we'll just drag this down a little bit so we can see a little more. And I wanna go ahead and select time switch and then you can adjust the duration in between each switch right here. And then I'm gonna go down here and change up our transition a little bit. And you can see that all the transitions that you might have loaded up are in here. You can even do a stinger with this if you have a stinger loaded up. In my case, we'll try the swipe transition here and we can see what that looks like right there or maybe we'll use the push transition. There we go, I like that one a lot better. And I'm just gonna click OK and we're all set. So now I can shrink this up and place it where I want it on the screen. And because all the images are the exact same size, you don't have to worry about them bouncing around or doing anything goofy. And just to add one more cool thing to this, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this and I'm gonna go to blend mode. And then I'm going to select screen. And you can see that just totally removes the black background so it makes everything transparent. And it looks really good. Really good stuff. And there's so much that you can do with this plugin. You can even 
even use it to switch video sources, although your mileage may vary with this one. I wasn't able to get it to cycle through the sources in any kind of reasonable order, but images seem to work flawlessly. If you want to see how to optimize your stream and all of the assets so it runs better, you should check this video out. Big thanks to the channel sponsors. There are links below so you can check them out. I couldn't possibly do this without them or you. So thanks. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.